say, big night for the Matildas. Australia with a goal on the road to Tokyo 2020. Hello and welcome to the Matildas Insider Show, ahead of their match against Sweden, which kicks off on Wednesday, the 16th of June at 2.45 a.m. We've got a great show ahead as I'm joined by two former Westfield Matildas, the current Westfield Matildas, young Matildas head coach, Leah Blaney, and also my former Matildas captain, Melissa Barbieri. Bubs, Leah, great to see you again always. It'd be nice if it was in person, but Zoom's going to have to do for now. Isn't it just, uh, we've just come out of lockdown in Melbourne. So, you know, <laughs> fourth time lucky for the Melburnians. And I know, Leah, you're just jumping into camp. So it's great to see you both, um, albeit not in person. Yeah, look, excellent to see everybody and really looking forward to tonight's chat. Always nice to chat with you girls, isn't it? It's great. Okay, so let's review the game. Denmark versus Australia, 3-2 loss. Um, Bubs, I'll start with you. I thought the, the girls started really strong on the front foot. We're creating chances, but conceding off those set pieces really set us back in the game. Yeah, I think it's always um, it's always about monitoring and keeping your emotions in check when it's um, all in your favour, isn't it? It's all about you know riding that wave of really good um, chances and just keeping your foot on the throttle without getting that lapse in um, concentration which all it was um in in those three instances i honestly think um it was against the runner play um denmark's denmark scoring in and getting an own goal like that it always demoralizes you and you think after all the chances that we've just had, that's how it goes in the back of the net. And you just got to write yourself. But unfortunately, they couldn't do it. Um, another couple of uh, mistakes and, and it's and you're three on your down and you can't do that against a quality side like Denmark. Yeah, that's right, Bubs. And Leah, look, we, we have to look at the cold hard facts is that we have now conceded 13 goals in three games. And I think the most disappointing thing for everyone, similar to what Bubs said, is Yes, there's been some good play against good opposition that's um, cost us goals, but it is those lapses of concentration and those mistakes that, that really have cost us in these games. Yeah, look, that's certainly true. And um, I think Tony mentioned in his, his post-match press conference, there were periods of the game where the Matildas controlled the game how they want it to be played. And uh, the improvements there with the team starting to gel, now they're spending a little bit more time together, really looking forward to seeing where the girls get to in the coming weeks and, and putting those pieces together so that we see that complete performance uh, come match one of the Olympics. That's it. I mean, that's the key thing, isn't it? We are building up to the Olympics. Bubs, it's been a difficult time for the Matildas as well, being away from each other. But you can see that relationship and that understanding come back with the players now. And, and I guess that was such a positive to take out of this match against Denmark as well. And and also that we kept going and we kept going hard and we eventually got the two goals. I mean, that's right. I, th I think at the end of the day, the, the lineup in itself gave the girls a huge confidence boost. Um, I know that, that people saying um, that we had so many names uh, missing from the last matches that the, the lineup alone gave the girls a real huge uh, confidence boost. And not only that, um, you know, that, that weaving of that um, playmakers and, and all that sort of creativity and, and things once you start to feel comfortable, that's not there yet, but I think mm. that will come. It's, it's only a matter of time. The girls know each other so well. A little bit of a different formation might have thrown them out a little bit, but you know, that's like, that's what a, t a coach has to do, that, to find the right mixture, the right um, forecast for whatever they need to throw together. Uh, and get it right, then he's got to do it. And and I, I'm I'm all for um, th throwing a three back in there and and seeing what it what it can do. I mean, back in the day, Tommy Samani did it a couple of times. Um, didn't work too well with us, but um, no doubt <laughs> these girls are a lot more capable than we were uh, back in the day. Look, we were pretty good. We weren't that good. Um, but you know, when you play against teams 
uh, a three back or four back, um, you know, whatever mixes well for these girls. And I think just writing those um, those new nuances, I think I think they'll they'll grow as a team and 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 push forward really well in the in the next game. And Lee, I just wanted to touch on something that Bub said there because what you could see is that Tony really wants to play a very high intensity, high pressing game. Mm -hmm. And you saw that and we were forcing Denmark into making mistakes, just couldn't create, turn those mistakes into chances for us and putting him away. But you can definitely see the intent with Tony and the team now, can't you? Yeah, absolutely. And it, it's exciting for Australia moving forward. You know, in the past we've had um, great success at playing that style of game. Um, so it, it's good to see that uh, we're, we're finding strength in that at the moment and it's going to be continued with and, and perfected. And obviously, like anything, I think Bub's mentioned about the formations. If your principles are intact and players are, are used to being tactically flexible, then that's the way forward with, with international football. It's, it's a great foundation. I'm excited about it. It's a good way to be. Well, despite the loss, there was still plenty to celebrate with two debutants, Kyra Cooney Cross and Courtney Nevin, making their first appearances for the Matildas. <laughs> I just want to say it's really cool to have you guys here. I think we've all watched you play in the W League, all heard your names thrown around for the last couple of years. So I probably speak on behalf of the team that we're all been a joy to be a part of it. Should be a proud moment. I'm sure we'll never ever forget this moment. Um, but I thought you both came on into really well. So welcome to the team. I hope you felt welcome and um, hopefully many more to come. <laughs> Thanks guys, uh, I had a blast with my first tap. It was good, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for your support and the else. Well, Leah, I mean, fantastic to see two Matildas debutantes there. Give us some insight into two of these players and what they're going to bring to this Matilda squad. Look, they're both uh, certainly exciting players who bring different strengths to our Matildas playing group. To have a left-sided uh, central defender on the pitch, it just gives another weapon um, to our back line in terms of our playing out capabilities and the skill set that Courtney Nevin um, possesses. What I think was most impressive from these two young players is the confidence they played within that arena. They certainly didn't look out of place. Yeah, and Bubs, let's just talk about we've got some fantastic attacking players in this squad now. And adding to that is Kyra Cooney Cross. What are your thoughts on her? And I mean, we used to be so strong on the defensive side of things and have to rely on that. But realistically, all over the pitch now, we have a huge amount of quality and depth. Yeah, I mean, we've got artillery everywhere, don't we? A huge amount of weapons. And I know um, that Kyra Cooney Cross is all about, um, you know, instilling some really good standards um, with herself. She didn't want to move overseas too early. And that's really, you know, she's really got her head on straight there. I think she said to um, me when I tried to talk to her about W League, she's like, um, I want to stay in W League. I want to get my feet in the ground. I want to build a foundation. And I think that's just great uh, that she's working in the W League. And you can see from the last two seasons what arsenary she has with um, both feet and her composure. And I always think she looks a bit like Tommy Rogic on the ball, very balanced, um, you know, great footballer. And just to have her um, in the wings, especially with those in front of her and helping shape her in, in what she's going to become in the future is really exciting. And I especially love her work ethic has gone through the roof. I was a bit worried about her when she was younger. Um, and, you know, sometimes the defensive side of things is always hard for people that are really good with the ball. But mm. I've, I love what she's become. Um, the older she gets, the more she has this team uh, ethic uh, surrounding how she plays. And, and I love it. And many kids coming through that have that skill set, they lack in that defensive prowess. And she's got the, the whole makeup and I'm really impressed with her. And, and hopefully she gets a foot in the door here and, and keeps it in there. Yeah, and look, we'll touch on our players when we do a preview of the Sweden game. But another one who hit a milestone against Denmark, Emily Van Egmond, 100 cap. She's only the seventh woman in Matilda's history 
to hit that mark. Leah, just how good is Emily Van Egmond? Oh, look, it's an incredible achievement by Em. And, you know, it, it's evident in the way she plays that she's technically one of our best Matildas in terms of her passing ranges and her ability um, to break lines and those sort of things in games. So great moment for Emily. Uh, proud of her that at such a young age, she's amassed 100 caps. It, it's something that um, is rare in our game and it, it needs to be celebrated and, and highlighted for Em. Absolutely. And Bubs, look, just how crucial is Em, Em and her best and Em playing, playing in her favourite position, particularly with quite a large tournament coming up in the summer. What is her best position and, and how important is she to this team? Look, I think Emily is best played as a number 10. Um, certainly somebody who sits behind that front three and basically pings balls wherever they need them to be played. She's got great vision. She's got great execution and great timing. Not only that, but when the opposite side um, teammate has the ball, she can be in the box and finishing. Um, you know, Tamika Yellop is, is much more of that forward running player, whereas Emily has the ball at her feet and she's just a magician with it and she can see passes that nobody else can. And it's important for us to have her in that role. Um, and, and I mean, with the absence of KK in that six, she has been pushed back a little bit. And I don't think she's utilised at, um, at six as well as she can be at 10, but she can play anywhere. And I know that her discipline and, and what a season she's had for West Ham has just built her um, in confidence even more now. And now that she's a senior member of the squad, she, she knows that she's got people under her uh, wanting to not only take her position, but also uh, role modelling themselves off her. So it's really important for her to go out every game full of confidence and spreading that confidence to each and every one of her teammates as well. Yeah, look, Emily's had a really good season over here with West Ham. Has struggled with the cold a little bit, the poor thing, but it's an outstanding achievement and it's a huge congratulations from me to you, Emily, and from all the Westfield Matildas fans. Delivery coming in back post. Van Egmont scores. She was the assist queen on Friday night. Now she comes up with the opening goal. Okay, so now to the big one. We've had some decent internationals and there's another one on the way against Sweden. Leah, Sweden won 1-0 against Norway recently. Stina Blackstenius scoring in the 66th minute. This is another tough team that we're coming up against. How, we, how do you think we're going to set out our stall against the Swedes? Yeah, look, um, they're certainly a very, very good side, um, a powerhouse within Europe. Um, defensively, they're very well organised. So the Matildas certainly are, are going to have to move the ball very, very quickly in the in the front third when they do have those opportunities to try and break down the, I guess you'd call it the Swedish block, it, it's known as. Um, so it's certainly something that um, we, we speak about, the quality we have in our attacking third, and, and they're going to need to be on. You know, there's no question about that. Um, it, it's exciting to see. Um, some of the best players in the front third up against some of the, the best defenders as well. So I'm really looking forward to the game. And Bubs, there's another player who made her 214th appearance, the most capped player in European history, the legend that is Caroline Sager. She just runs that midfield for the Swedes, doesn't she? Yeah, she's, she's a powerhouse in there and she's got an engine to boot. I mean, she could go all day. She's like the Energizer Bunny. I mean, when you think about it, Ivy Lewick can run all day, but this girl has got some legs on it, especially at her age. I was thinking about the Swedes and what they've accomplished over the years. And, you know, they, they came third at the last World Cup in 2019. Um, and also, you know, we've played them 11 times Uh They've, they've beaten us seven times, drawn three, and we've only beaten them once. And so, look, it's a powerhouse team. It's a hard team to beat. But you know what? 
what do we do? We never say die, right? So we're going to go out there. We're, we're definite underdogs and we love that, uh, that label. Um, I certainly feel like the, the lineup against Sweden might actually match them quite well. Um, we, mm. As we know, Tony set up with the three back last time and so did Sweden uh, against Norway. So the formations might actually um, come into play here and, and we'll see the likes of maybe Ellie Carpenter. I wouldn't mind seeing her out in the wing um, with Steph Cat Catley on the left and just pushing those players uh, in the wide areas quite well. And I think if, if they're playing at a three back, we can expose them in the wide areas. And with Sam Kerr, if she doesn't drop too far and trying to receive the ball um, at feet too often and, and tries to go over the top, we can probably beat them with some pace as well. So it's exciting. I mean, we're the underdog, so let's go for it. <laughs> yeah, I love it, Bubs. I mean, we're always the underdogs against the Swedes, aren't we? <laughs> but we're coming up against them in a tournament. So how do you think these teams will approach this match? Do you think, um, Leah, do you think it's going to you know, be a bit cagey? Do you think there's going to be a few changes from the first internationals against Norway and Denmark? What do you think? <laughs> hey, Leah, I don't know if you were there, but when before we played China and then we played China in a major tournament, we all swapped shirts <laughs> so that they wouldn't know who we were. I think times have changed and people know our faces these days. Yeah. But I'm, going, I'm going to tell, I'm going to call Tony, I'm going to say, listen, we're not telling anyone the minor, but I want Carpenter to be in Catley shirt and, and vice Yeah, exactly. And all that. Yeah. Yeah. Stick Sam in goal. Liz up front. <laughs> well, that'll teach them. No, no, they won't know what hit them. They won't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll play a short corner variation. <laughs> Always. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those are the days. What do you think, Leah, though? I mean... There's, there's arguments for are you going to play your best team? Do you want to get a result? Or are you just going to be a bit sneaky, as, as Bob's was saying? Yeah, look, look both, I, I'm sure both coaches are going to go into the game with, with different objectives. Um, and it might be a case of are you seeing where your best are at against their best? Uh, do you want to blood in some young players? Do you want to try something different tactically? Um, they're all, all things uh, not privy to, um, and I would hope none of us were at the moment from uh, both Sweden and the Matilda side that we would expose. But what I do know is both coaches are preparing for an Olympic game. So whichever way they go, they're obviously, um, they've got a plan and they've got a reasoning behind it. And if the objective is to blood in um, and see what depth we have, then as we've seen in previous games, um, Tony set out with an objective and he, he's delivered. And I think that consistency um, will be important for the Matildas as well in approaching such a tough opponent um, as as it will be for Sweden. I'm sure they won't be wanting to give us the upper hand on anything come um, playing them in the Olympics. I mean, a very diplomatic and coach's answer, Leah, of course. But, um, <laughs> you have definitely transitioned into the coaching side of things. Bubs, any final thoughts on this match? Another exciting time to see how our Matildas are... Uh, a gelling back together under Tony, new coach. It hasn't been too long. What are your thoughts on this match? Well, I'm just thinking that, you know, we used to be scared of the USA um, right before all of our players went over and played there and started to think, actually, hey, they're not that, they're not that good. I can beat them. And on an individual level, each of our players can outmaster each of um, the Swedish players. They, they know them more now. I mean, Ericsson, for example, plays um, in Chelsea. Asalani plays at Real Madrid. So Ivy Lewick would know her. These players are, are not uh, out of reach for our girls any longer. They play against them quite regularly. So I'm sure they've had the opportunity to tell Tony about some of their weaknesses as well. So I'm just excited to see uh, what he changes. I mean, um, I've gone from being a player in amongst it, knowing all the ins and outs, to now just sitting back and thinking, I wonder what, what will happen today. And I mean, you always want to know ahead of time what's going to happen. So, you know, uh, when Ivy Lewick is playing at centre back, you don't get the shock of your life. But I, I, other than that, um, it's, it's such an exciting time for us. And I know people are stressed out because we're not winning. We always go through these periods and not winning. It happens. It has to happen. Um, and I don't think that 
is paramount to our success at major tournaments. Yeah, look, and I'd, I'd have to exactly back up what you're saying there, Bubs. And I caught up with Alana and Emily last week, actually. And, and we do also have to remember that there's been a lot of transition of coaching and styles and with this team, then they haven't had the chance to be together that much. That does take time. So, Leah, how are you seeing this team develop? Now that they've actually, you can definitely see, even in the last game, that they're getting back to that familiarity and, and being together and, and understanding how each other plays. We saw in the previous game against Denmark that the girls were, were starting to gel um, a little bit um, more. And again, the objectives Tony is setting for them they're, they're attempting to execute those things do take time and you know it might be a case of do they happen for this olympics yet to be seen you know it's a long-term plan here where we're building towards a 2023 world cup so what does it look like then and i mentioned before the the blooding in the younger players is it a long-term plan you know is it maybe a not for now it's great that we're, we're starting to see those strategies um, being implemented and built on from previous regimes as well. Uh, this stuff doesn't happen overnight. It's been a journey for this group with various people over the last, you know, 10 years. Um, if we look back to when these girls, Sam Kirst, first started playing with our Matildas, right? Um, so it's something I look forward to and we have to play these games now. It is so important for us as a country. Very important because there's a decent tournament around the corner on home soil. So, look, Bubs, Leah, um, it's been fun. <laughs> it's been fun. Great to see you both. That's all we have time for. These are always, they fly by. They're always very short and sharp, even with a few of the mess ups that we had. Mm -hmm. um, but great to see you both. But just on that, just a quick score prediction. Bubs, come on, score prediction. I'll put you on the spot. Um, I'm going to go for... 2-1 Aussies. Yes, love that. Go on. Come on, Leah, what's your score prediction? I'm going to go 1-0 Australia. Lovely. And look, because I'm the host, I don't have to give one, so it's down to you two. But <laughs> <laughs> great to see you both. But look, congratulations also to the Socceroos. They're qualifying for the final round of the World Cup qualifiers. Brilliant news. Also, our national team, the Pararoos, are running a fundraising campaign. So please get behind them and give whatever you can. And more importantly, it's not long now until we see the Westfield Matildas in action against the fifth-ranked team in the world, Sweden. If you're in Australia, you can watch it on Fox Sports, KO, ABC, or via the My Football Live app. Make sure you don't miss it out, because this is another huge game for the Westfield Matildas. It's a big night for the Matildas. Australia with a goal on the road to Tokyo 2020.